superior orbital fissure versus cavernous sinus thrombosis. Both are serious conditions involving structures near the eye, but they differ in their anatomical involvement, clinical presentation, and underlying causes. Now let's start with the superior orbital fissure. The structures passing through this fissure includes the lacrimal nerve, the frontal nerve, and also the nasociliary nerve. These are divisions of the ophthalmic nerve, which is the first division of the trigeminal nerve. Also, we have the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve, and also the abducent nerve. These nerves moves the eye in various directions. Also, we have the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins, which drain the orbital content. Any lesion at this superior orbital fissure will result into sensory loss over the forehead and ophthalmoplegia resulting from involvement of the oculomotor nerves, while occlusion of the ophthalmic veins result into proptosis, chemosis, and conjunctival congestion. Causes of this superior orbital fissure could include trauma, tumors like nasopharyngeal carcinoma, and inflammatory like in Toulouse hand syndrome. Now let's talk about structures passing through the cavernous sinus. We have the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear, and the abducent nerves. In addition, to the ophthalmic and maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. Cavernous sinus thrombosis could be septic in etiology as a complication of sinusitis or aseptic like in hypercoagulable global state. And this thrombosis will affect the oculomotor nerves resulting into ophthalmoplegia. Also, there will be sensory loss over the forehead and cheeks due to loss of function from the ophthalmic and maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and also collusion of the draining veins from the orbit will result into proptosis and chemosis. Now let's talk about the common differences between the two conditions. Both of them are associated with ophthalmoplegia and sensory loss over the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve and also proptosis and chemosis but we have to know that the sympathetic fibers comes with the internal carotid artery inside the cavernous sinus thus cavernous sinus thrombosis are frequently associated with horner syndrome also we have to know that the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve is within the wall of the cavernous sinus that this condition is associated with sensory loss over the cheek also, cavernous sinus thrombosis is frequently bilateral, while it is unilateral in case of superior orbital fissure syndrome. Also, the cavernous sinus thrombosis are associated with constitutional symptoms like fever. Regarding investigations, the superior orbital fissure, CT scan and MRI will show inflammation around it, while in cavernous sinus thrombosis, there will be thrombosis with dilatation and filling defect at the cavernous sinus. Regarding the treatment of the superior orbital fissure is by treating the underlying etiology and corticosteroids can help. While in cavernous sinus thrombosis, antibiotics with or without anticoagulation is the treatment of choice.